Robert, middle initial L, Batdorf. What's the L stand for? Lewis, L-O-U-I-S. And uh, place of birth? Fulton County, Ohio. Born at home. Is there a city there? Uh, Swanton, Ohio is close. Swanton? S-W-A-N-T-T-O-N. Okay. Your date of birth? 8831. So that makes you what, like 70 what or else? something? 80, no, 80. I'll be 83 here. Education? Uh, my education? Yeah, the grade you meant to, like uh, college? Four years of, uh, of high school and uh, some college, not, not anything. Uh, so you got a diploma from high school? Yeah, yeah. And some college? Yeah, took, took courses, whatever jobs I might have, so okay. I probably may have a couple semesters of college. Okay. All right. I took programming. Computer, programming. Computer programming is one of them. Oh, very yeah. nice. I was operations computer operations manager at a. At what, a uh, was it COBOL you learned or? COBOL. Yeah. Occupations prior to the military. The military. Before was, the military. Before the military. Well, when I got. To, oh, geez. Uh, apprentice uh, painter. Served apprenticeship as a painter. Started to. Okay. My like dad house was, painting and stuff? Huh? House like, painting, yeah. Or, or factory, whatever. Just just that type of painting. Interior and exterior? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, military service, were you drafted or enlisted? No, I was. Uh, reserve was called into active duty. Reserve? Marine Corps Reserve. Toledo, Ohio was. Where was that? And you went to Toledo, Ohio. Yeah, that was where the reserve unit was from. And so you're in the reserves for a few years. When did you start? Uh, 1948. Wow. You started in 1948. Yeah. Okay. Took uh, called it active duty two years later for the Korean War. And uh, the military branch you entered was the, the is Marine that the Corps. Army Reserves? United, United States Marine Corps. Marine Corps. Were you like a general or something? Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> afraid not. Yeah. They were. What rank did you have? Uh, well, I was a PFC when I got. Uh, uh, I think when the war started, and then I went to corporal, and then when I got uh, a prisoner, they give me a make give me a sergeant stripe. So PFC in Korea, and then when you got there, you got increased. Oh yeah, and uh, I guess they. I was. Uh, they they advanced me to corporal uh, after I was a prisoner. So then when I got back, they gave me another another striped sergeant. And when you released, when did they do that? I heard that Clinton did that. They made you the sergeant. Did you get sergeant like right out of you? Right, you know, right, right, right then. Oh. Well, that was nice of them. Yeah. Well, I think they've done that with all prisoners of war that got come back. So you got advanced to the corporal as PO do, and then yeah. when you were released, you got another sergeant. increase to a sergeant. Okay. Did they call you Sarge? Or some people do. Some people, even the VA, VA sometimes they call me Sarge. <laughs> oh, great! What was the unit that you went to in Korea? What was the name of the unit? What First Marine Division. First Marine Division. Right. Seventh uh, Regiment. 2nd Battalion, Fox Company, 3rd Platoon, 3rd <laughs> Squad. <laughs> Alright, 1st Marine Division, 2nd Regiment, 2nd Battalion, and then what was that? 2nd uh, uh, Battalion, 3rd uh, Platoon, 3rd <laughs> <Third> Squad. <laughs> and 3rd Squad, and it was called Fox? Fox, yeah, yeah, F Company, but we always call it Fox. The third company. squad is F Company, or just... Uh, well, that's what it is. The company, I, it's it's F Company, but we always call it Fox. We put names on it, Fox Company. Which they, that's basically the way they do it. Fox Company. Yeah, because it's Abel, Baker, Charlie, Dog, Easy, oh, okay, Fox. Okay, so F that, Company yeah. equals Fox Company. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what do you remember about your first experience hitting the ground in Korea? Well, the uh, we went into Incheon, 
we uh, we were on a uh, APA attack tra attack tra transport what what they are we uh, we the beach and everything had been secured we were we were uh, follow up they were the, they had landed the day before so there wasn't any active the beach had been secured in uh, inland for I don't know how many miles but what the, day was that a year oh that was 1950 what month September somewhere in the, like uh, the 20th or 21st of September something like that so this is after MacArthur landed with his troops or well this is this the, the landing in Inshon was uh, see they were we were bottled up down to Pusan. Mm -hmm. Well, they made this. The Marine Corps made this. There was one army unit in in there, but we come in there and that cut the supply lines through Seoul that the communists was supporting. Right, so our so you Pusan. so you swung around from Pusan. No, to we Inchon? come. We no, we oh. come right from the United States from San Francisco. We stopped in in Kobe, Japan, uh, just uh, just but to refuel the ship, and then we left and right around the tip of Korea and landed at uh, Incheon. Okay. And you were the first to land in Incheon? No, they were the, the fifth. Uh, the first Marine Regiment, I think, went, went first. Okay. And then the fifth and then the seventh, because we got there after the, after the beach had been secured. Okay. So you got there September 20th. After the beach secured. Yeah. Okay. In other words, uh, I forget which regiment went right down the main, like main highway type, mm -hmm. into Seoul. But one regiment went on the right hand side of the, uh, and then we were on the left hand side. Okay. So what were your uh, first impressions when you got to Incheon? Well, I don't know what. Uh, Oh, it all looked, I always thought, geez, everything looks oriental. They just look different since we were, it's, it's, it's oriental, I figured, well, that's the oriental look. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, what were your military duties? I was just a, a, a Browning Automatic, I was a, B, a BAR in, in, a, in a fire team, in a Marine platoon. That's a machine gun or something? No, well, it's a, it's, it's a, I, it, my BER was fully automatic. It's like a machine gun. It's 30 caliber and it's a magazine fed, 20 round magazine. What was your participation in any battles or firefights? Uh, that well, you we had, had that uh, you got to. We run into, uh, we walked right into a machine gun and in, in that uh, going to Seoul. Uh, uh, who is that? That's North Koreans. North Koreans. Walked right into it. One guy got got hit. Uh, fortunately, I don't know how how they missed all of us, but uh, we had to call in an airstrike. They had a pin, they had you had us pinned down. The machine gun was just raking us. So one uh, guy got hit. One guy got hit. He reached up to his jacket caught on his the barrel of his rifle when he hit. The, he reached up and it went through his hand and, and shoulder. <laughs> oh, and so, uh, so you had to call in a airstrike. Yeah, call in an airstrike. We couldn't, we couldn't hardly do anything. He had you pinned down. Oh yeah, yeah. Called in an airstrike, and that uh, <laughs> it was coming. A Corsair come in. Uh, you, who gave uh, him the directions? Uh, one of your radio men or something? Yeah, we had a ra we had radio, we had radio contact. And, you had a radio uh, man. Yeah. And uh, he came pretty quick. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. Pretty, they must have been in the area because they cause they usually come in fours. Uh -huh. Four planes, uh, to, and uh, they one, got uh, one game. No, we had four of them, and they got in on like a big Ferris wheel type thing. You know, got in and kept it going, kept going. We only come in, come up, the other one right behind them, hitting the hitting the target. So they blasted. They made sure they killed them all. <laughs> was it how many men in this uh, machine? It was a pillbox or something? I never seen them. We just we just moved well, once once they uh, the planes knocked it out. We just kept right on it. It would happen to be that uh, uh, I wasn't right there. Walked through where the where the machine gun okay. was. I was to the right of it. What do you call it when a machine gun is disabled or 
put out or knocked out? Well, knocked out, yes. It was, it was street fighting, and we, uh, they just, they called us back because the other company, I guess, could take care of it, so. So you went, you went another way? Yeah, we just pulled back and went, carried, went on towards uh, the, the north or the north uh, west section of Sewell to the main road going out of Sewell north to, towards Pyongyang. And we stopped, we got there at the 38th parallel and uh, uh, set up there and, uh, and we were, a few days we were relieved by uh, uh, South Korean uh, soldiers. You got captured? That what? You get captured? You I get, got... You get... You were relieved by... No, our unit was... Uh, re in other words, we pulled back. Okay. We pulled back. And your... You, your and a, a South Korean South unit. South Korean We Army. didn't go across the 38th parallel. Okay. They let, the, they let the South Koreans go across the 38th parallel. And where'd you walk to? We walked to Kodo Ri. Or did we ride on trucks up that... Boy, I'm trying it's to like think. a Cotori Pass there or something. It's Cotori is the top. It's, a, it's the top of the first town on the plateau where the Chosen Reservoir is at. You probably walk there, right? Huh? You probably walk there. I'm trying to think if we if we. Jeez, I thought I'd never forget all this stuff. Um, anyway, you got to Cotori, walked a drive. I think we we rode in trucks. I think we was there about a night, maybe two nights. We dug in because we were actually in, in territory that hadn't been secured. Right. And we went. We moved up uh, by the road, the main road going up to the reservoir, in a long skirmish line. <laughs> What's At least a skirmish my line? Yeah, skirmish. What's a skirmish line? It's just a, a line of guys about maybe 20 feet apart. The whole, the whole, look, I, I don't know how many You guys was. marched in a line? In a, in a line, a skirmish line, that's moving, moving forward. Like side by side? Side by like side. Hand by hand? Side. Yeah, 20 foot apart. Okay. <clears throat> One on each side of the road? So if you had to No, jump. a whole line of, you know, I mean, a good ways on each side of the road. So one guy was on one side of the road close to the ditch, another guy was on the other side? Yeah, and all this, all these men all, all the way across. One big long skirmish line. I don't know who, who figured out to do that, but that's how they did it. And then uh, that's the way we moved up uh, to... Um, so in case you have to run in the ditch, you're right there, you know? Yeah, you know. It, was, uh, it, was, it, was, it was fairly open, and this is this flat and fairly open the whole way up. Uh, little patches of trees along the way, but basically was, was open. Okay. And, uh, that's why you could use a skirmish line type of a thing. Okay. Which is a pr pretty good idea. If you do get somebody shooting at you, you've got to... Jump in. Yeah, you can... You're, you're plus you're separa yeah. you separated. Right. So, so if you run into artillery or mortars, you were separated enough that you could... Uh, right. And what happened to, then? Well, we moved, we, we moved the length of the plateau. I forget how many miles this is, but... <clears throat> Trying to think, it took us a couple of days because I know we had to dig in out there and. Uh, this is the uh, close to the reservoir. Yeah, we're on the plateau where the reservoir is at. It's at the north end of this plateau. C H O S U N. C H O S yeah E N. Yeah. And you had to dig in. Well, we had to. We I think it took us two uh, two days to. Get, a, get up there to the reservoir. And we dug in on uh, on a hill there. Uh, I think they call it East Hill. It was, a, it was a good sized hill right at the edge of the reservoir. I think they call it East Hill. Because okay. the east side of the reservoir. All right, so you're up there on the east side of this reservoir. All right. And what happened next? Well, we just dug in. We, we had no resistance, no enemy resistance at all. And we probably might have been there a couple days. So you just hung out? Uh, well, we'd send out patrols and things like okay. that, yeah. <clears throat> we didn't run into anything. I went 
was on one patrol and we didn't run into anything and uh, we went north from where we were at and uh, checked some of the uh, different places where they could set up uh, uh, enemy could set up positions and didn't check with some Koreans and they, there wasn't any any enemy around they had all they had all really pulled back right okay so you're there by the reservoir it's, it's probably pretty cold by now or is it cold no it's not it's not bad what it's, month was that <coughs> September this is uh, October at this at that time it was uh, it was Thanksgiving by that time because we had Thanksgiving dinner over And in the meantime, with all this, there was activity. The the, uh, the uh, Marine Marine uh, uh, Air Wing was uh, building an air base, the uh, airstrip, there at uh, Hagru Re. The Air Force was building it, or the engineers were building. Engineers, Marine Corps, Marine. They might have been Army or whatever. But mostly, we were. It was Marines doing it. Marine engineers were building that airstrip. So we were, like I say, we were there. Yeah, it was about Thanksgiving. It was Thanksgiving when we, and a few days after that, well, it's the 28th, the 27th of November, we moved up to Tok Tong Pass. How do you spell that? Tok. T O T O K. Yeah. T O N G. T Tok and T O N G. To Tok Tong Pass. Yep. Okay. And that's where we set up positions there, and uh, uh, that's then the next morning at 2.30, the Chinese hit us. And that's when I got captured. And, uh, needless Wasn't anybody to say, watching? Anybody? I was on watch. And there was nothing until it was, it was, called, about, it was about 40 below zero at this time. Whoa. So you had to be in your sleeping bag, or you wouldn't you wouldn't wake up in the morning. So uh, you're sleeping in a sleeping bag. Keeping no, I wasn't sleeping. I was on watch. Did you keep your eyes out? There was a big big boulder that we were in front of, mm -hmm. and uh, this boulder was about four foot high, ten foot long, and about four foot thick. And we set up there because <clears throat> it, we went. There wasn't any acti enemy activity, so we wouldn't. We were in front of it instead of in, in rear of it, because in the rear of it you couldn't, you can't really see much of anything. So, and we out in the, out in front. Well, the Chinese just basically snuck up on us, and uh, when I knew they were there, he was shooting at me, and uh, that's all she wrote. They came in quiet. Yeah. I never knew or seen anything until oh, we heard some drums and bugles, uh, and I. I woke the, the two guys, the other two guys that were in their sleeping bags. I said, uh, I think we got something going on. So I said, just don't move, stay quiet until we see what's going on. And I no more than got that out of my mouth than that Chinese walked around the corner and just with a Thompson submachine gun just blasted us, just swept it all over. I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how he missed me. So you, they heard drums, bugles, and whistles? Yeah. yeah. In the distance, it, you, this is common when you when the enemy was around. They put us in a they put us in a cow shed, or they keep, and uh, for about five minutes, and they took us out of there and uh, and put us in uh, Chinese foxholes. They searched us in this Chinese this cow shed, and okay. uh, so it's getting light, and they figure they must have thought that well, there'll be the planes will be over soon. So they put us up in foxholes that they had dug in the side of the hill. So and they had a guard with uh, with each one of us. How many men? Chinese? No. How many men did they capture? You guys? There's three. 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 Do you want their names? Yeah. Uh, uh, Danny Yesko. White E S K O. Yeah, I think so. Yesko and Wayne Pickett. P I C K. E T T. T. Yeah. E T. Were, these are the only guys that survived this attack, or, or uh, you the only guys up on that hill? Oh no, there was a two hundred and forty. Uh huh. The whole company was on that hill. Right. Okay. There, it was just us, cause that's where they, that's where they hit the line. Right. See, they weren't. 
right there, that's where they hit, and they figured, well, they got us out, but they didn't. They didn't, they didn't proceed more. No, no, they didn't proceed more. Huh. And uh, so that's why I figured our guys would 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 uh, do something to uh, help you, right? Yeah, but they didn't. Nobody came. So it was. Uh, there was a, the Chinese were doing a little bit of firing, but then everything quieted down. So it was a hell. When they hit us, there was a hell of a lot of uh, things going so on. The other friends had to see that. I mean, the other. They, I think, the most of most of uh, our squad got got eliminated. Yeah, oh. I don't think there was uh, there wasn't much of third platoon left. I don't think so. Three yeah. of the ten guys survived. I would say, uh, yeah. There was a couple guys out of the uh, uh, that I talked to later on, and when we had a meeting down in uh, in Quantico, Virginia, about ten years ago, there was a couple guys left from the from the squad, but that's about all. There wasn't much left of that squad when we were. How many passed away that that day? They died. In the casualty rate, on uh, was. Uh, there was 28 casualties on the first assault. There was, uh, I think there was 15 killed, three wounded, uh, no, three prisoners, and uh, you guys? about you yeah, guys. And about 10 wounded. Yeah, three prisoners were taken prisoner. That was a casualty rate at, uh, at, for our uh, for the for the platoon. Uh, it's 28 casualties in the history books. So 15 so, killed, three prisoned. Three, yeah, pr and and uh, was, and I think three there was some wound, wound, and ten wounded. Ten wounded, something like that. That's pr that would be pretty close according to history books. I'm referring to the Marine Corps history of the thing. So what happened next? Well, the Chinese, after we they uh, they kept checking us, and the other uh, Miesco and Pickett, they they. They sat up and and uh, surrendered, and uh, then they uh, then finally I see they didn't shoot them so and they weren't leaving, <laughs> so I figured well I decided I'll get up too because they didn't shoot them right off the bat so then they took us down the hill. So it was a, a small ravine at the bottom of the hill. Very a gully or yeah yep. There was a, a, a frozen over small stream coming down, which right. is, yeah, and then they walk, and then that's then the, they made us kneel. This the, the Chinese uh, that got, that captured us, he made us kneel down at the edge of this creek, and that's when it, I figured he was probably going to shoot us, and an officer come running up, waving his pistol and jabbering in in Chinese, and mm -hmm. and he evidently he told him no, don't. Do what you're going to do. They made you kneel down by this water edge or something. Yeah, the the, the guard, the, the guy that captured the Chinese that captured us, and then on, when they did that, an officer come running over, hollering in Chinese and waving his pistol, and and evidently he told him not to take. He probably told him take him over to the command their command post, and that's what they did. So basically, he was probably saying not to shoot you. Yeah, yeah, because he didn't, because he was he, he was gonna. going to. Yeah, had no reason uh, he would. He told us motion to kneel down, and uh, we had our hands behind our head, mm -hmm. and uh, he was in back of us, and right in the right position to. With mm -hmm. that, he had a Thompson that wouldn't have taken. <laughs> yeah. So you. Uh, so you, he take you to the main officer or something? Yeah, took us over to the Chinese command post uh, on there, uh, to where the. The Chinese officer was that was in charge of the, the whole operation there, and, they and then he searched us, did a further sh search, and uh, and then they put us in. After they there was uh, uh, they, they got a search. Then they then they to took us over a Chinese guard with each one of us, and took us up to foxholes on the side of the their positions there, and on the side of a hill. Were they really deep foxholes, or? Yeah, they were good ones. I'm glad they were because uh, two uh, Australian P-51s come on the scene. 
-hmm. and actually the company must have called in for an airstrike. Uh -huh. So these two uh, Austra Australian P-51s come over and uh, made, a, made a couple passes and then they come around and they, uh, a Chinese soldier run out of a house down in there. It was a house down where we were at and he run out of the house and they seen it. So as soon as they seen that, man, they wheeled around and, and come in and uh, with, I, I, they were, I guess they were, I don't know if they were 50 caliber machine guns on a 51 or not. Anyway, they, sh and then and they had rockets and, and those suckers, they, they threw a bunch of rockets at us and they were shooting the hell out of everything for a while. I don't know, they didn't hit any of us, but they sure, the, the, the building crap was, yeah, they filled that full of holes. And they blew up the cow shed that we were at. Lucky thing you just got out of oh, there. Oh yeah, yeah. We were in there five minutes before this. One rocket right in that cow shed. It was gone. <laughs> wow. And the poor cow in it. Oh yeah. Geez. I felt sorry. Oh, they could eat them. <laughs> yeah, they did. Charcoal. <laughs> I felt sorry for that poor cow. God. But yeah, it 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 eliminated everything. It would have eliminated us too if we would have been in there. Wow. So, uh, Not a few a few seconds later. So what yeah, happened really? next? What happened next if it, they, well, they, uh, they after they after the planes uh, cleared out, and uh, then they got out of the foxholes. And they took us down to the uh, c command post again, and uh, they really didn't talk to us anymore. Tried to do any searches or anything like that. They uh, they uh, just put up one guard on us, and they started walking us. Uh, uh, away from the from the area uh, we walked all day uh, down this 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 valley went uh, quite a ways and we come to this town which I think probably was you damn knee about it but I'm no don't know for sure the Chinese had taken over that that town and uh, that's where the evidently that's where they was taking the, the all the all the, the American and British and whatever prisoners they caught from that convoy and from us and from other different groups that uh, had a problem with the, when the Chinese made their assault. So like I say, we were there a couple weeks, at least, uh, I would say a couple weeks. In that place with the ox? Yeah, yeah. Uh, then I'm trying to think, yeah, I think that was put, then they, they moved us out of that and put us in a, took, into a Korean house into uh, one uh, one room. It was a good good. It was a lot, kind of a long room in a in a, in a Korean house. And then stayed there. Yeah, for... stayed there for maybe a week or so. This time I I, I lost track of it. It was close to it was the day before Thanksgiving when all this started. So if you figure uh, November twenty first. Uh, yeah, if that's when it somewhere it was. Uh, Thanksgiving was close to that day. So that attack originally started about November 28th. 28th? November yeah. 27th. No, that Fox Hill is 28th. The Fox Hill? Uh, yeah, 28th we were attacked, the morning of the 28th. Okay. But a lot of the other units were attacked on the 27th, but they hit us on the 20, morning, 2.30 in the morning, November 28th. All right, because I had the 27th, I don't know why, but... Uh, well, the other units were getting hit uh, okay. over like you damn Nina, but we didn't know it. We okay. couldn't even hear it. We couldn't even hear any fighting going on or anything. Okay. So, uh, so you originally hit on November 28th. Yeah, because there was uh, traffic on the road. Our our trucks and that were rolling up and down the road past right. us that night. That was at Tak Tang, November 28th? Tak Tong. Tak Tong, okay. And uh, so you stayed there in uh, about a week. So that brings you probably to December now, right? Yeah, we're in, we're into December. So uh, I know where I was in. Uh, so sometime, let's see. I'm try, I'll try to work out the, the time because I remember the Chinese had us in. A, a, we were outside of uh, Hagaruru Ri, somewhere between Kota Ri and Hagaruru Ri, up there by mm -hmm. the reservoir. Right. Uh, at, on Christmas, because mm -hmm. the Chinese they, they 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 knew what the date was, so I they so I knew when Christmas was. Uh, 
so we, I remember our planes were uh, were doing some. Our planes were there every day, shooting and, and bombing and uh, the Chinese positions there. Usually every day that we were in. And they took took you to Hanguri around Christmas. Yeah, we were in a we were in a foxhole in that somewhere between Coterie and Hanguri, Ruri. On Christmas. Yeah, they had taken. Uh, wait a minute, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. They t just let me let me go. go back. When we left the. We went over to you, damn knee. Then from there, we you were there. Up Twelve more prisoners. Yeah, yeah. We picked up some more prisoners. And then, then from there, they come in and they asked if anybody could drive. They went needed volunteers to move some trucks mm -hmm. that they had captured. So me and a few other guys volunteered. We figured we get the hell away from here. Maybe we get a chance to surrender or something. Right. And I didn't know if I could drive one of the trucks or not, so I was just uh, just to get get out, get somewhere else. So they picked me and a master sergeant from the army. His name. This is on Christmas Day. No, this is this is before that. We haven't oh. got to Christmas Day yet. Okay. The reason I'm the reason I got down there at Ree because they picked us to drive some, some trucks. Okay. So the trucks were down in when the, in this convoy that this Drysdale convoy right. found out. But we didn't get there right away because, uh, of course, you can't move during the during the day. It's only at night. So they took us they took us down after they picked us to do the truck driving from this group uh, in the U Damni area. Mm -hmm. Then uh, they we we went down to the reservoir, and then we then they brought us back. They put us on a truck and brought us back west of the reservoir and they put us in a in a Korean house because uh, it was colder than hell. It, it was bad. That's when I got frostbite in that truck all night in that stupid truck. So then uh, a couple days later they started walking us back towards the reservoir again. So we had driven all the way back, and then it took us uh, took us further back to the reservoir. And this is the time we we walked all the way back because I walked right past Fox Company's old positions there at Tok Tong Pass. That was that road uh -huh. run right past so went there right down that road past where we were were, were uh, you were. were captured. Yeah, so back into the uh, the uh, chosen reservoir area again at uh, Hagru Ri, and that's when they put us in foxhole somewhere between Koto Ri and Hagru Ri. Mm -hmm. Koto Ri is at the southern end of the plateau where the reservoir is at, okay. so somewhere in between, and uh, right there on just a little ways off the road where they had this uh, Drysdale uh, convoy got hit and got, right. got uh, attacked. So we stayed there. I knew we were there. In Hanguri? At Hanguri area, between Kotori and Hanguri. On Christmas. On Christmas, I know we were there. And, okay. Uh, so what happened after Christmas? Um, I don't know quite. We weren't there maybe, maybe another week or so. And then we, they moved us south. Hmm. Uh, because you're way up north of the parallel, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh yeah, this is this is up. We're right there at the reservoir uh, yeah. you know, on Christmas Day. So they moved us. They we went down off the plateau, and there was a village. We got down to where that we were basically kind of out of the mountains. It was a flat area, and the mountains were off in, in a distance, pretty well. Flat. So you moved south to a flat area. Yeah, it was. A, and I don't know. It was a small village. There wasn't that many houses around there. Usually the Koreans would, if there was an area that's, they usually kind of had their houses in an area, then they had rice paddies Farms and all that in. around them. So. so you moved down to a flat area. Yep. And we stayed there, let's see, all of, all of January, the rest of, uh, uh, all of January, all of February, 
and pretty much uh, about the third week of, uh, of March, that's when uh, they uh, took two of us and they took us south. They you took and, the you rest. And, you, uh, and the, you and the other guy? Yeah. You and uh, Danny? Or George, ha George Hayden. George Hayden. No, he was originally now Pickett, uh, Pickett was still there and with us. Yesco, and Yesco, they, he was back. He stayed back there because they, uh, and the, he was wounded. He couldn't walk, so he stayed back there. And you, you and uh, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, George Hayden, H A Y. H A H A Y. Y D E N. Y D E N. Yeah. So they took the two of you. And we started going south, walking south. And uh, where'd you wind up? We wound up down by the 38th parallel. Sometime in May. It was in the it was in the their the, the Chinese spring offensive. Some because they were uh, they were uh, kind of in uh, they were pushing pushing our guys because the, our guys were pulling back. And that's when we went to in this village. I think I was telling you about. I, I seen that book laying on a pile of dirt. Did I mention that? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, that you at the thirtieth parallel, you stayed in the house or something. Uh, you, when you yeah, they always stayed. They always, you know, took over Korean houses. Did they kick the people out or something? Or uh, no, not with two of us. With two of us, they they, they we just stayed in a room. Uh, so. Uh, and uh, this was for, well, like I say, they moved. They kept we kept moving around. That's why I say I, we we didn't know what they were doing. They said they were taking us down to help if they caught any prisoners to help mm -hmm. uh, to to help our guys, right? Uh, so that they would uh, I don't know cooperate better or whatever with the, with the Chinese. But uh, so you stayed there in May. Yeah. In this house, right. how long did you stay there? Oh, we moved. We moved. Uh, uh, we would work. We were well, all this time from. We were walking uh, uh, six days a week. They stop would stop on Sunday, and and the Chinese would take a break from there. They'd walk a week, take a day off, walk a week, take a day off, and then uh, it all depends on the the, the situation. Uh, around them, or at the, or at the, you know, where they're fighting, yeah. they weren't far away. Yeah. So sometimes we would stay in a in a place uh, maybe a couple weeks. So they want to keep you away from the fighting. And right. The right. Americans could recap, re recapture you. Right. But we were just, it wasn't much doing other than walking at night, and uh, trying to keep from getting uh, uh, strafed or bombed at at night, which happened uh, a couple times. Because the Chinese trucks, when they go along, they every mile on the, their main supply route, they had a Chinese soldier posted. And when they heard an airplane engine, they would fire their rifle. And, At the airplane? No, just to fire it. Oh. So they'd pass it down the line. Oh. If a plane was coming, the they would pass the it, you know, and that there's a plane in the area. So they would, so if there was any Chinese driver, Chinese were moving supplies at night, and so they leave their headlights on. So when they heard these gunshots go off, they turned their headlights off. Oh, so that's so that's. But sometimes these Chinese drivers didn't didn't uh, shut their lights shut off. their lights off, and down they come. And I'll tell you, uh, they uh, they could blow the hell out of things, really. So mm -hmm. it uh, so in fact I. Uh, in one of the instances, we uh, in this walking, I don't know exactly when it was, but it was in our our excursion, I might call it. That this all this walking, we come to this supply dump. It was it was in the in there in like probably May was a good was a good time, mm -hmm. and they had this supply dump. And when a supply dump, they just dump everything off the trucks onto the in the in the side of the road in a ditch. Oh, yeah. And the Chinese different Chinese outfits would would come in and and 
pick it up. Pick up supplies, which was usually they fill their little. They had little tubes, cloth tubes, full of rice, and they tie them around their neck or tie them on their pack or whatever. And so when the when they were when it was come time for all these guys to eat, they, they would take and dump whatever they wanted to eat. So Boil it they'd up. have one the, the cook and the outfit would cook up a whole pot of rice and the guys would get that's how they that's how they carried oh. the rations so and uh, as far as meat when any time an ox got killed or a horse or a mule that went into the pot which tasted pretty good because yeah. <laughs> I ate a lot of ox and mule yeah. meat <laughs> and horse meat so you kept and, uh, marching around yeah they kept walking us and uh, uh, that's when I was I started to tell you about this 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 book I seen. We come to this this uh, town. We were all walking all night, and I was pretty tired. And we come to this uh, this village, which had been under attack a, a couple of days. Well, it, there were still smoldering mm -hmm. parts of it yet, yeah. and uh, there was there was military equipment, our military equipment. So I don't know if it was South Koreans that that had it or but I think it was American position because I seen this book there was a mound of dirt in this partially blown up Korean house we just got there's enough of it left we could get some shelter from the Sun so there was a pile of dirt from from what collected there from the walls and stuff like that there's a bayonet sticking in it in the book in the in the no not in the book in the pile of dirt uh -huh. and next to this uh, bayonet was sticking in there was a a book, and uh, it was a it was a Bible that we issued to our guys. It was a it was just the New Testament plus uh, I think they had the Book of Psalms in there and and a couple other other of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And the wind there the wind was blowing a little bit, and that 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 Bible was laying there. I wasn't sure it was a Bible until I but it looked like it was one of our Bibles that they issued to to the military. And I looked at that bayonet and I said, it looked like ever it was a booby trap. So now yeah. you're in these houses, foxholes and stuff? And yeah, they're just next? like I say, wherever there was that we, but they're still moving us us west. At this point, we we didn't know, I still didn't know what they were going to do with us, but we just, hey, we had to go along with them. They separated us after a while. They figured that, uh, uh, I guess they got the idea that maybe they didn't want to, they did separate us, so they, they took to, us. Just how many guards? Two guards? No, just one guard. One guard one with twenty-five guard. guys. Yeah, yeah. Then they separated you, and well, at this point, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Well, somewhere in between all this, see, we they, we, we would stop, mm -hmm. and somewhere in between this walking down right by the third day up where the fighting is, there was another incident where. We got under our own artillery fire on this this moving west, and uh, you could we had one of the days where it started out rainy, and then it cleared. Well, the Chinese decided that when it was raining that they would they would do what they needed to do during the day. Well, they got caught out in the open because all of a sudden Jets it cleared up. And as soon as it cleared up, man, our planes are, are coming in. And the art first uh, uh, down close to the lines, then they had a, one of those light airplanes, this artillery spotter flying around over, and he's seen us. So you got to Camp 5 in October. Yeah. And this is what year again? 1951. 51. Yep. Of course, December came and went. And then the rest of the time was in the camps. In the camp, we went. They took us from from uh, Camp Five by truck to a Korean village. When was that, this? Right after you got this there. This is this is the end of October. Well, after we left after we left Camp Five, it was at the end of October when we left uh, left Camp Five. You, those same twenty five guys. Uh, yeah. And you went and went where? We went to a village somewhere between. I'm trying to th give you a good. Uh, it was just north of where they didn't have. Uh, was I, the camp five still have hundreds of guys in it? 
I didn't know. They kept everybody separate. You oh. didn't. We didn't. See, I didn't see anybody. You know, Americans. They, they them Chinese. They didn't. They did. They they kept everything. They didn't tell you nothing. Uh, as I remember, we didn't. I was didn't see any any Americans. And uh, they, like I say, they took us from Camp Five then by truck into this village. And we just still, it was all I know is in North Korea. And um, it was the, the road that it would have been on would have been uh, over more towards the eastern side of Korea. What time you got? I've got uh, 20 minutes to, to five. Because you're waiting, didn't you have to go to some dinner or something? Oh, what time is it? I'm not sure. She'd be knocking. Oh, on the okay, door, okay. I think. So you went to this village. Yeah. And uh, and uh, it was they, they had made it into a. There wasn't all he had his car. He didn't put wire around it. They had taken moved all the Koreans out, and set it up as a as a camp. And it was Camp Three. That's what they designated as Camp Three, and that was the end of October, 1951. So now you're in Camp Three. Yep. Till then, just then it was just regular. Stayed in a, they had a Korean house, uh, where they put us, and uh, about. I figured now there was there was more of a sin, but I I don't remember. There probably there couldn't have been, maybe a couple, rooms full of guys. <clears throat> so you were, you were like pretty much opened up the camp, right? You'd yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, fifteen twenty guys maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but slowly they brought in people, and then it's you know it's, it started building up, and uh, so that's and that from that time on it was just strictly uh, boredom. <laughs> the routine of the day. They tried to communist, communist, communist stuff, indoctrination, and and uh, what they call it, uh, uh, trying to change us. Uh, yeah. So, brainwashing. Brainwashing. There we go. Yep. Brainwashing. A couple of years of it, darn near. But it. Uh, so this is October, nineteen fifty-one. Yeah. And how long did you stay in that camp three, Bob? Until I got released. You stayed there a year or two. Or? Yeah. To July of. Uh, uh, when did we move out of there? When did I get released? It's July. No, it was it was August. Uh, I think I got released on the... 1953? 1953. Well, you were War ended on the 27th of, 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 of July, uh, I believe. And so we were there until... <clears throat> you were, that original Hangaroo when he captured was 1950? 1950. November 28th, 1950. 50. And I got released on, uh, I think, uh, August, August something. Wow. Or so you were pretty much a prisoner for like, what, three years? 33 months. 33 months. Yeah. 